Hey there, Mago Day kiddos. I have a question for you. Do you know what the tallest mountain in the world is? Well, a lot of people say that it's Mount Everest, and that is kind of true. Mount Everest is 29,000 feet tall. Whoa, that's pretty tall. Um, and Mount Everest is the highest mountain above sea level. But did you know that there is a mountain called Mauna Kea in Hawaii that is actually taller than Mount Everest. Now, Mount Everest is higher than it, but Mauna Kea is um, actually taller because a big chunk of it, 19,000 feet of it, is underwater. And then there's about 13,000 more feet that's above sea level. So if you look at the whole thing, it's actually taller than Mount Everest. Can you believe it? And Mount Everest might be the tallest mountain above sea level, but there's another mountain called Mount Chimborazo in a country called Ecuador that is actually the highest point on Earth. It's a little bit shorter than Mount Everest, but um, it's located around the equator. So because it's closer to the equator, it's the farthest away from the Earth's core. Now, I'm just sharing all of this with you because we're going to hear a story today about the whole Earth being covered in water. Whoa, that's pretty scary, right? We're going to hear the story today about Noah's Ark and about how God shows his judgment by washing out the whole world. And all of those mountains, the highest mountains, whether that's Mount Everest, Mount Chimborazo, Mauna Kea, were all covered in water. That's a lot of judgment from God. But the Bible tells us that God's love is even greater than his judgment. And we are going to hear about how God showed his mercy and his grace in even greater ways than he showed his judgment here. So we're going to read from the book of Psalm, actually, to get started. It says, Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens. Your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the mountains of God. Your judgments are like the great deep. Man and beast you save, O Lord. So even though God showed his judgment by sending a flood to cover the whole entire world, we know that God's steadfast love, his faithfulness, and his righteousness are higher than the heavens and deeper than the deepest parts of the sea. Well, we've been reading in the book of Genesis, right? We know God created a perfect world and then sin came into it. And we've been hearing these stories and stories about how people keep making mistakes, but God is good. And boys and girls, that is the whole story of the Bible. It all points to Jesus and our need for a savior. Our chapter, Genesis chapter 6 today, starts with saying that the wickedness of man was great in earth. Things were just going downhill. And it says all of this evil comes from within our own hearts. We were the problem. People were the problem of the sin. And this made God sad. It makes God sad because when we sin, it hurts God. And when we sin, it hurts us. And God doesn't like to see his people hurt. So God decided, I've got to do something about this. God had a plan that would show his judgment and show how much sin hurts him but also show how much he loves us. So the Bible tells us that there was a guy named Noah. And Noah, it says, was blameless in God's sight and that he walked with the Lord. He was a man of faith who trusted in God. And that faith and that trust would be really important because God gave Noah a special task to do. He said, Noah, I need you to build a giant boat called an ark. And you're going to take your family on it and you're going to take the animals on it and you're going to be saved, but I'm going to wipe out the whole entire world. That requires a lot of faith and trust, doesn't it? Because that's kind of a crazy thing to ask somebody to do and to tell them is going to happen. But because of Noah's faith and his trust in God, he did that. He built this ark and then the waters came. So Noah and his family were saved and he brought on two of each kind of animal and they were saved as well. And it rained and rained and rained for 40 days and 40 nights. It rained nonstop, and it didn't just rain. The Bible actually says that the waters, that the sky opened up, water fell from the sky, and then it says that water sprung up from the deep as well. So water is just coming from everywhere. 40 days and 40 nights. And it says that, the water, that there was so much water that all of the mountains in the entire world were covered by hundreds of feet. So all of those mountains, Mount Everest, Mount Chimborazo, Mauna Kea, all of those tall mountains were covered in water. 
everything on the earth, all life, was wiped out. And Noah and his family were sinful human beings, just like we all are. Noah wasn't perfect. It said that he was holy and blameless and that he walked with the Lord. But just like all other people, Noah was sinful. So why was Noah and his family spared? God could have just wiped out everybody, couldn't he? But we know, boys and girls, that God loves his people. He loves us. He loves us as his special creation. And he didn't want to just completely wipe us out. He actually was going to use Noah. You see, thousands of years after Noah lived, there would be a man that was born that was perfect, that was holy, and that was Jesus. Jesus would come from Noah's family, and Jesus would be the Savior that we are all waiting for, that we were all waiting for, who died on the cross for our sins to take away all of our sins and wash away all of our sins, just like God washed away the sins of the people with that flood. Noah was not perfect, but through Noah, God used Noah as a part of his perfect plan to give us Jesus, to give us a Savior, and he did that as an act of love. So a lot of people hear this story about Noah's Ark and they think, man, that is pretty scary and harsh that God did that. But that's what we deserve. We deserve death because of our sins. But because of God's love, he showed us grace within his judgment. He made a way for the Savior of the world to be born and to take away our sins. God told Noah, I will fulfill my covenant through you my promise through you to save all people. And he did that through Jesus. So God's judgment is big. The penalty for our sin is big, but God's love for us is even bigger. So boys and girls, I want you to think about that. Receive that love that God has for us and take that love and share it with other people. Share with them the hope that we have in God and in the good gifts that he has for us. Let's pray. Jesus, we love you. We thank you so much for dying on the cross for our sins, and we thank you that your love surpasses the mountains, goes all the way up into the heavens and down into the depths of the sea. We thank you for this great love, God, and we're sorry for the ways that our sin hurt you and hurt other people and even hurt ourselves. We thank you for the forgiveness that we have through Jesus, and we ask that we can share that forgiveness and love with others. In your name we pray. Amen.